we are. We're in the 2021 Ram TRX. The thing that you're gonna ask yourself why. Imagine a bulldozer married a Dodge Demon and they had a kid. That is this truck. And the last time we drove anything like this, we were in the Shelby Raptor actually from Shelby America just outside Vegas. The problem with that drive, which was actually very fun, was we had a handler in the right seat telling us what they were and weren't comfortable with because we were actually in a customer's truck. This one is a press car. And I'm just gonna go there. We've all seen Jurassic Park. We all know that Ford has ruled this segment with the Raptor. What's the only thing in Jurassic Park that can take out a Raptor? It's the T-Rex. You're watching Everyday Driver. We make a TV show, podcast, and YouTube channels dedicated to great cars, driving adventures, and helping you find a car you'll love. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a thing. I remember the first Jurassic Park that I saw where the Velociraptor was about to destroy something and somebody was gonna get eaten. Then this huge T-Rex head came in and bit the Velociraptor in half. That was the entire design brief meeting. Team, go home, take the weekend, watch the entire Jurassic Park catalog from the very beginning, and you'll be properly inspired. This has the same 6.2 liter supercharged motor that you find in all of the Hellcat products now shoved into a pickup. Now, of course, pickups are plenty big enough to handle that. Its purpose here is a little different than the Hellcats, which are designed for smoky burnouts, and I can't believe that car goes that fast. This has, I can't believe it goes that fast, but it's limited to 118. This is a 702 horsepower engine with 650 pound-feet of torque, and the supercharger indeed has the Hellcat logo on there, and this is one hell of a star-spangled grand finale before pickup trucks go all electric. According to paleontologists, the T-Rex weighs between 11,000 and 15,000 pounds, so I'll just go with that. This is a big, big truck. Take a look at this thing. This TRX is massive. I mean, trucks have gotten bigger in general. This is a whole new thing. This truck is six inches wider than most Ram 1500s, and the bodywork is eight inches wider. They used composite fender flares. The stance of this truck tells you that it's just angry. It's ready for pretty much whatever. And that's not just for show because the track itself is six inches wider. Then you have these monster 35 inch tires. This isn't just large. This is almost category redefining. Not only does this have an intake, but it has lights in the intake just to make sure you notice, hey, by the way, I have a big scoop on my nose. I think Ram is doing the best truck interiors right now. They're interesting. They are incorporating a 12 inch screen into the instrument panel. You'll also notice that the rotary knob to put it in gear is gone. The TRX has a proper shift knob and the paddles on the steering wheel, the paddle doesn't extend behind the wheel. There's actually extra functionality buttons on the back of the steering wheel, but then the same paddle is designed so you can have your hands low or high to shift. There's a 12 volt plug for your radar detector right up here. There's more storage. It's like they came out here and bombed around in the truck and locked everything down in the cabin because they knew it was gonna go flying. We have joked that FCA, which of course is now part of the Stellantians, that they should just Hellcat everything. And they already thought of it apparently because they are quickly in the process of doing it. What I'm waiting for is the Hellcat minivan. Eight speed automatic, you can turn it into manual mode and pull the paddles. Interestingly, differently than the normal RAM, here where the actual shift knob is on most RAMs, that is where you put it in your TRX mode, which has many. Let's see, I need to be, oh, Baja, I'm not in Baja. There's also sport and tow, but you know what? Snow, this is snow on top of sand, which means you get the world's weirdest mud substance and it just doesn't care. It's perfectly happy to do whatever you would like. I think this will open up new ownership. The combination of performance and tech and luxury. I mean, on the street, 
you can out-accelerate almost anything. It's kind of like being jabbed with an EpiPen after cardiac arrest. It shouldn't have this kind of acceleration, and yet, here's a 6,400-pound truck that does. Like a zero to 100 mile an hour time in 10.5 seconds. We've driven all of the big pickups of late, all the 1500 series pickups. We really like the current Ram. The interior is great. The screen is very impressive. It has the best ride of the group. This is not concerned with any of those. I mean, a lot of that stuff's still in here. No, this is concerned with not being on the road at all. Where can you put this that you just don't think a truck should go? And then what's funny about having this huge Hellcat motor in here is anytime it feels like it's going wrong, there's really only one response. More right foot. The more hoof you put into the middle of this, the more this just gets through whatever you would like it to do. Drifting is a joke. Turning around and hammering your way up a very steep incline is just about how much gas you'd like to give it. When we got out here, we were a little bit tentative at first, just kind of trying things out. We were trying the surface and wondering, is the truck gonna hold? I mean, after all, it's 6,400 pounds. It's huge, it's enormous. And then the width of these tires just made it float. And if you're concerned about what to do and you're not quite sure, do I, how do I get out of this situation? Just add power. It's really quite easy. This encourages you to be an idiot. I mean, it really does. You just, you say, well, yeah, I can get up that. I'll just, I'll just give it more right hoof. All you need is power. All you need is a little more from that supercharger. And this does quite a bit with the supercharger barely spinning and helping you out. There's a 33 gallon gas tank in this because let's be honest, you're going to hammer through your gas. This is designed like the Raptor is designed to be off road going fast, not rock crawling, going quickly. The people at Stellantis decided to build the truck with the tires in mind. They started with 35 inch tires and that meant they had to reposition the front axle 20 millimeters forward just to fit the tires. Most of the money in this truck went into the suspension. 13 inches of wheel travel. Bilstein has built adaptive dampers, adaptive suspension for this truck alone. To get 13 inches in the rear, the entire suspension has to be rethought and re-engineered so it doesn't intrude into the bed, into the payload area. They weren't going to budge on how big these wheels and tires had to be. Because to get the things they wanted it to do, that's what it had to have. There's no reason to have restraint, which is kind of the problem, because you're going to drive this in a way where you just think, well, yeah, it can do that too, which is really fun until it all goes wrong. And let's be honest, we've had that thinking all day. It's just, well, let's try that. We are in a place in Utah that is generally just razors. So I am taking this big 6,500 pound truck down terrain that a razor normally goes on. And here this thing is, confidently bombing through snow and mud. It gives you stupid confidence. It's so endlessly capable. I haven't even switched this into four-wheel drive high. I'm just leaving it in auto. It just knows, it just can. That was quite steep and it doesn't care. It just, it just doesn't care. Those purpose-built Bilsteins are designed for you to do, let's be honest, this as airborne as you would like to get. That is what it's for. This truck has jump detection. See this launch control Christmas tree down here? That's old news. Jump detection mode, where everything just kind of holds its breath and backs off on the gas and makes sure you land accordingly. It has accelerometers at each wheel, and it knows when you're airborne, and so therefore when you land, it cuts the torque, and it optimizes the truck so you're not gonna damage it. See, now we got some speed. Come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it just can. Just blazing new trails. I haven't even been down half of these yet, but I just don't care. I know the Ram TRX can handle it. What's over here? Huh, this is fresh tracks. I've never been over here yet. Well, let's go find out. Oh, what's over here? <laughs> 
I realize that the Raptor can do all of this stuff as well, and I'm sure I know that Ford has an answer coming in the Raptor R. We'll see what crazy engine they stuff into that. But this is a watershed moment for pickups. 700 plus horsepower from the factory with a supercharger. Yes, I Hellcatted my pickup. This truck is going to open up new ownership for people. There's people who own supercars that don't use them even close to their capabilities. Just the appeal, just the satisfaction of knowing what this truck can do. As a matter of fact, the suspension on this truck is designed to not overheat while you're traversing difficult terrain at 100 miles an hour. Who thinks like that? Baja racers do. It's almost like a pre-runner with leather and tech and luxury. You're gonna be astounded how good this truck is. And it's comfortable. I mean, not doing this, you understand, but in general, it's comfortable. And if you do jump it, okay, when you do jump it, it has a surprisingly good landing. Now you can tell that it is violent. This is a lot of weight. Remember, 15,000 pounds is what the average T-Rex weighed. A lot of weight flying through the air, and yet it just deals with it. I've never been much of a pickup truck guy. You know me, 8% of me likes pickup trucks, especially the lifted kind. More than 8% of me wants this truck. You just, you're gonna bring it out here to a place like this that is really designed for the razors. And you're just gonna screw around and have fun and then drive home. And you can take five people doing it. It's so satisfying to drive. I know you can take lots of trucks, you can lift them, you can make them incredibly capable, you can make them more capable than this. What's significant about the TRX and also the Raptor is the fact that here you have this capability in something that came from a major manufacturer that has, believe it or not, a warranty. When you go break it and you're going to try, it has a warranty that backs up the parts they're supposed to work. You know what's happened is that Ram, or Stellantis, has taken this and chucked it off about everything they could find and just said, well, it needs to hold up to that. They watched what early Raptor owners did, and that is threw their truck off of everything at 70 miles an hour, and they tried it themselves to make sure this would just work. I can't believe how stupid and fun this is at the same time. If you get to experience this truck, or you own it at some point in your life, every other truck owner is going to bow down to you in deference. All the village children will come out and hail you as the action hero that you are, and mothers will hand you their babies, hoping that you will kiss their forehead, just so your mojo will seep into them. Of course, you can drive Baja trucks. We've done it. They jump better than this. They land better than this. They look like completely stripped out race cars with dust flying into your face. This, you could take the whole family, make them all laugh. Try to see if you can get the cooler to jump out of the truck bed. This is designed to be an amazing everyday. I can't believe how comfortable this is. By the way, Android and Apple CarPlay and leather and suede and everything you could possibly imagine to make it a nice place to be. And then, oh, by the way, did you see how airborne I got yesterday? It's stupid and silly, and how does it do these things? And yet it does. I can see why dealers are marking these up right now. The TRX. Bow down to the best gasoline-powered pickup truck ever built.